Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth lecture in the localization of mycology ischemia and today we are having a short summarized lecture about culprit in posterior STEMI. As we learned before in the first lecture of posterior MI, how to diagnose it. In this lecture we are going to understand how to localize the culprit artery and culprit lesions in patients with posterior STEMI. Let's remind ourselves the game with the anatomy. We have left main, LED, LCX, we have the diagonals, set the perforators, and we have the obtuse marginals. Besides the right coronary artery giving the coronal branch, giving the RV branch, and then bifurcating into posterior, lateral, and PDA. We have mentioned before that the posterior wall is one of the forgotten walls of the left ventricle that, of course, is prone to infarction. And so today we are focusing on posterior STEMI, which is of course commonly to be missed in the clinical practice. Posterior STEMI of course denotes infarction of the posterior wall of LV. So when we say posterior wall, of course, we mean the left ventricle. Posterior MI of course is very common to see as it occurs in about 15 to 20 percent of STEMIs, especially with inferior STEMI and lateral STEMI, and of course it adds to the magnitude of infarction and to the prognosis. And isolated posterior MI may occur in about 3 to 11 percent, so it is not uncommon to see isolated posterior STEMI. And of course another terminology for posterior MI is infrobasilar MI. So posterior STEMI, of course, is one of the most common types of MI to be omitted, urgent revascularization, because they are commonly misdiagnosed as non-STEMI, although it is actually STEMI. Of course, we remember that right coronary artery is dominant in about 70% of cases as it gives origin to the right side of the PDA, and in this case, RCA supply inferior posterior wall, whereas LCX supplies only lateral wall. In about 10%, LCX is the dominant, giving rise to left-sided PDA and RCA is small. And in this case, of course, LCX supply lateral, posterior, and inferior wall, whereas in 20%, it is co-dominant between RCA and LCX. Posterior MI, of course, can be diagnosed through the 12 lead surface ECG, as we mentioned before, as it can show horizontal C depression more than or equal 0.5 mm in V1 to V4, so only 0.5 mm is enough. Tall R wave, that means that the R S ratio in these leads is more than 1, and R wave duration more than 30 milliseconds, as here the R wave is equivalent to the pathological Q waves of posterior STEMI and upright T waves. And as we mentioned why this change in posterior STEMI, we explain this here in this cut section of the heart with the six precordial leads when we have infarction in the posterior wall of left ventricle. Here the current of injury is directed posteriorly towards the back of the patient and so these ECG leads showing the injury away from their positive poles resulting in ST depression and tall R wave instead of ST elevation and pathological Q wave. That's why posterior MI is actually STEMI, not non STEMI. And of course, the upright T waves instead of T wave inversion in the evolving stage. Of course, 12 lead surface ECG here is considered like a mirror image of the actual ECG pattern of ST elevation of the posterior ECG lead. And here, if we put the posterior ECG leads, it would show this actual ECG pattern, which are shown here, V7, V8, V9 in these anatomical locations mentioned here, can show the evidence of ST elevation. So, posterior MI can be diagnosed by the 12 lead surface ECG using V1, V3, and also it can be extended to the other precordial leads, and also through the posterior ECG lead so showing a C elevation more than or equal 0.5 mm in V7, V8, V9. That's why posterior MI is actually STEMI equivalent. Remember an important role. The posterior STEMI may show extension of the ST depression and the total R wave to V4 to V6 according to the position of the heart. So don't be astonished if you detect these changes in V4, 5, or 6. In this case, it may be also posterior STEMI because sometimes the position of the heart is different, resulting in these changes in the left precordial lead rather than the right precordial lead.
If we need to answer this question, what is the plot supply of the posterior wall? Of course, the right coronary artery, which is dominant in about 70% of cases, it would bifurcate into the posterior descending artery and posterior lateral branch, and from their names, of course, they perfuse the posterior wall of left ventricle and when the ltx is dominant in about 10 percent it will also gives blood supply to the posterior wall and when they are co-dominant in this case the posterior wall can receive its blood supply from both of them so of course when there is a thrombus including the rca or including the posterior descending artery or including posterior lateral or the om branches or the lcx all of them can result in infarction in the posterior wall of the left ventricle resulting in posterior STEMI. So LCX and RCA can both be incriminated in this pathology. Let's see this ECG example. When the patient has ECG features suggestive of posterior STEMI, so here I'm speaking about isolated posterior STEMI without any other extension. The first possibility is the RCA territory with occlusion in distal RCA or posterior lateral branch or PDA because of course, as we mentioned, right coronary artery is dominant in 70% of cases and co-dominant in about 20% of cases. And also there is a possibility of dominant LCX territory, so it can be an occlusion LCX proper or one of its OM branches. So all these possibilities can be a culprit in case of isolated posterior STEMI. Here we can see an example of a patient having ST depression and RS ratio more than 1, but here they are seen in left precordial lead because as we mentioned before, the changes may extend to the left precordial lead according to the position of the heart in the thorax. And so this patient has isolated posterior STEMI without any other extensions. And here when it was confirmed in another example, by putting the V4, 5 and 6 leads in the back of the patient, so they are actually V7, V8 and V9, they have shown here ST elevation which is nearly 0.5 mm, which is an enough cut point to diagnose posterior infarction. So here posterior STEMI is confirmed using posterior ECG leads. Another example, when there are ACG changes suggest posterior STEMI with ST elevation in lateral lead. Of course, the first possibility is the dominant LCX here, because the lateral wall involvement, of course, raises suspicion of LCX. But also, it may be posterior lateral branch of RCA, as from its name, it supplies posterior wall and lateral wall. So if there is a small LCX and its small caliper, I may suspect that posterior lateral branch of the RCA or sometimes the RCA itself is the culprit artery in posterior lateral STEMI. In this ACG example, we can see here that the patient is having ST elevation in one and AVL and he is having reciprocal depression in inferior leads, suggesting lateral STEMI with ST depression RS ratio in V3, 4 and 5. So here we are speaking about posterior lateral STEMI Mostly it is caused by dominant LCX occlusion and also the RCA is a possibility. Another example when the posterior STEMI is combined with inferior STEMI, so here I'm speaking about infroposterior STEMI, I would suggest occlusion of dominant RCA as of course it is a most common possibility that gives plus supply to inferior wall and posterior wall when it is dominant and also there is a possibility of dominant LCX occlusion as it may give supply to the inferior wall and posterior wall when it gives origin to the left sided PDA. In this ACG example, we can see ST elevation in inferior leads with reciprocal depression in AVR and AVL. And also we can see ST depression in V1 to V3 and there is RS ratio more than 1 with upright T wave in V2 and V3. So here I'm speaking about N4 posterior STEMI. I would think of RCA territory as a more first possibility, but also it can be dominant LCX. Another ECG example here, we can see ST elevation in the inferior leads and there is ST depression, which is profound and remarkable ST depression with RS ratio more than 1 and upright T wave in V3 to V6. Another example of the changes of the posterior infarction extending to the left precordial leads. So here I am also speaking about N for posterior STEMI, which can be RCA territory as a culprit or maybe it is also a dominant LCX. Another example, when there is ST elevation in lateral leads, 
inferior leads and posterior stemmy. So here I'm speaking about the most extensive example of infroposterolateral stemmy. And this suggests occlusion of dominant proximal LCX because here, if the LCX is dominant, I would expect that it was occluded from its proximal segment, resulting in functional inferior wall, lateral wall, and posterior wall of LV. But also it may be dominant proximal RCA occlusion with small LCX because here also the RCA gives blood supply to the three walls. So enfroposterior stemi, I will think of LCX, but also it may be RCA. In this ACG example, we can see ST elevation in lateral lead, lead 1, V5, V6. We can see ST elevation in inferior leads, and we can see ST depression from V1 to V3, and also extending to V4, with RS ratio more than 1 from V2 to V4. So I'm speaking about infraposterior lateral STEMI. I would think at first of dominant LCX due to the lateral wall involvement but it may be also RCA territory. In this ECG example we can see here that the ECG leads were put at the back showing V7, V8, V9 showing ST elevation confirming posterior STEMI together with the inferior STEMI and lateral STEMI. So here we are speaking also about infraposterior lateral STEMI confirmed by the posterior ECG leads. So if we want to summarize the expected culprit arteries in posterior STEMI, it can be LCX proper or AM or M branch, it can be RCA proper, it can be posterior lateral branch, or it can be PDA branch. So all of them can be expected culprit arteries in posterior STEMI. Is there another possibility that we have forgotten? Maybe, yes, in post-cabbage patient when there is softness venous graft or radiograft to RCA, PDA, diagonal or OM. In this case, the graft for example to the OM or through the RCA or to the PDA may be occluded by thrombus and so it can result in posterior wall infarction. So here the culprit is one of the grafts to the native vessels. So the sixth possibility is saphenous venous graft or radiograft to one of the vessels that supplies the posterior wall of the LV. An important question that force itself. When I see ST depression in V1 to V3 without toll or wave, is it posterior STEMI? This change of course can occur in patients with inferior STEMI, especially with RCA occlusion. For example, here we can see that the patient is having inferior STEMI, but he is having ST depression in V2 and isoelectric ST segment in V1. So as we, as we mentioned in the lecture of culprit and inferior STEMI, most probably it is inferior STEMI with RCA occlusion. But this is not a change that diagnoses posterior STEMI. So, when a patient have ST depression in the right recorded lead in absence of RS ratio more than 1 or upright T wave, it is not posterior STEMI. So if we want to summarize the patterns of posterior wall infarction, it can be isolated posterior STEMI in which there is no any other extension, it can be combined with lateral wall infarction, so it is posterior lateral STEMI, it can be combined with inferior wall infarction, so it is infraposterior STEMI, or it can be the three walls together called infraposterolateral STEMI. And the four of them can be caused by dominant LCX occlusion, either LCX proper or in branch, or dominant RCA occlusion, either RCA, posterolateral, or PDA. Sometimes the possibility of one of them may predominate the other according to the type or the patterns of infarction as we have mentioned in the previous examples. So, of course, our important clue, any ST elevation or ST depression in a patient with chest pain gives you a clue even if not fulfilling the criteria. So, at the end of this lecture, we understood today how to diagnose posterior STEMI and how to localize the affected culprit vessel in patients with posterior STEMI. And our take-home message today is that posterior STEMI is an easily misdiagnosis that raises suspicion of LCX territory or RCA territory occlusion according to which of them is the dominant, and so meticulous coronary angiography is needed to detect the culprit. Thank you very much for your watching.